If you're a seasoned Siemens PLC programmer, then you've probably had your fair share of programming experience in step seven. Both Somatic Manager, which is the previous generation, and TIA Portal, which is the current platform, are based on the Step 7 engineering tool for configuring and programming your Somatic controllers. Now you might have wondered what the key differences are between Siemens's latest and greatest TIA Portal and its older sibling, Somatic Manager. In this video today, I will share with you six key areas in Step 7 programming where TIA Portal gives Somatic Manager a run for its money. Before we get started, if you like this type of content, you can support me and this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Furthermore, if you'd like to get started with TIA Portal fast and efficiently, then check out my courses in the description below the video. Now let's get to it. The first important step of building a new PLC application is creating a modular structure for your program. When I'm creating applications, I typically differentiate between general machine modules, like for example a state handler module, an alarm handling module, or a recipe handling module, and project-specific equipment modules, like for example a heating system module or a water tank module. So how do both platforms, TIA Portal and Somatic Manager, handle structuring a PLC application? Let's start by having a look at Somatic Manager. So here we have a sample application opened in Somatic Manager. On the left side in the tree structure of the application, we can click on blocks and this will display a list of all blocks used in our application. There are no options here to create any kind of structure. You just have your list of OBs, FBs, DBs, UDTs, etc. That's really what you get. The only thing you can do here to create a more cohesive program flow is name your blocks in such a way that their function and place in the application is instantly clear. For example, in this sample application, all blocks related to equipment modules have the word equipment in the name of the block and all blocks related to machine modules contain the word machine. Now, when we switch over to TIA Portal, it's a very different picture. In TIA Portal, you can easily create a program structure by defining different groups under your program blocks. In this sample application, I have created a group called machine with all machine related blocks, a second group called equipment with all equipment related blocks, and a third group called global data containing all global data blocks. Apart from creating structure in your actual program blocks, there are two other important areas where TIA portal lets you organize your data, PLC tags and PLC data types. For PLC tags, you can create groups and neatly organize your tags under different folders for a clean overview. In similar fashion, you can add groups to your PLC data types to organize your UDTs. Now that we're still on topic, in my PLC course, TIA Portal PLC Programming Basics, I put a great amount of importance on building structure first for your PLC application before actually starting doing any coding at all. If you're serious about PLC programming, you should put structuring your application at the very top of your priority list. So it's obvious that TIA Portal takes home the victory here. TIA Portal greatly improves upon Somatic Manager by offering intuitive and easy to use grouping tools for creating folder structures in your program blocks, PLC tags, and PLC data types. When it comes to structuring your application, Somatic Manager isn't even playing in the same league here. It's a generational leap forward for TIA Portal. So you've created your program structure and you added logic to your different modules. Now it's time to compile and download the application. Let's see how TIA Portal and Somatic Manager stack up to each other in this department. In Somatic Manager, you need to manually compile your application by right-clicking on blocks and selecting the Check Block Consistency option from the menu. This will open a new window where you can then run a block consistency check using different options. Furthermore, and this is where it gets really interesting, Downloading of blocks is possible without compilation. As long as the logic itself is error-free, you can save and download your block. 
Now there's a real inherent flaw in this. Let's have a look at an example to clarify this. Here in network 2, we have a function block called FB Equipment Refill. Let's open this function block and let's add, for example, a new static variable to the block interface. So here I'm adding a new Boolean variable called OpenValve. You can see that I've added a lowercase letter x in front of the variable name to indicate that this variable is a Boolean variable. For integers, I would use a lowercase i, for reals, a lowercase r, etc. What seems like only a minor detail will drastically improve the readability of your logic, because it is immediately clear from the variable name to which data type the variable belongs. In my training courses, we go much more into depth about how to create clear and structured applications in TIA Portal, so if you're interested in that, go and check out the link to my courses in the description below this video. Okay, back to our example. We've added the variable OpenValve to the block interface of the function block. Now we just need to save this block and download it, right? Nope, stop. I'll show you why that's not a good idea. Let's close this block and let's go back to the location where this function block is called. Now you can see that the call of the function block is displayed in red. The block call is invalid now because we changed the block interface by adding that boolean variable. What we need to do here first, before downloading the function block itself, is to manually update all block calls for this function block. We do that by right-clicking on the block itself and by selecting Update Block Call. This function block is called two times here, one time for refill process 1 and a second time for refill process 2. So we need to update the block call from refill process 2 as well. Now that we've updated all block calls, we can download the function block itself and both instances or instance DBs for refill process 1 and refill process 2. If you only downloaded your function block and you forgot to update your block calls and download your instances as well, then there's a very real probability that your function block logic will not work anymore after your download. Now how about the younger sibling here? How does TIA Portal handle this compiling and downloading issue? I think you probably know the answer. Let's do the same exercise here that we've just done in Semantic Manager and let's add a static variable to the block interface of the refill function block. So we open the block, we add the new boolean variable in the static area of our block interface and we close the block. The instance of the block call is now displayed in red indicating that the block interface has changed. Okay, are you ready for this? Here is what happens after you press download. If we just pause the video for a second, you can see that TIA Portal is automatically compiling all blocks before the download. Whenever you want to download changes to the interface of a function block in TIA Portal, you don't need to worry about the consistency of your blocks because TIA Portal automatically compiles your whole application before each download. And during this compilation, all block calls are automatically updated if needed. Amazing stuff. Furthermore, TIA Portal will download all blocks related to your changes, so you don't need to think about which blocks, which instances you need to download. It's all taken care of automatically. When I first started out with TIA Portal and discovered these autocompile and automatic download of all changes features in TIA Portal, it was very hard going back to Semantic Manager, where you need to do all that stuff manually and where there's a much higher risk for human error. Another big win for TIA Portal here. If you're working with PLC applications in the field, it's vital to know if your offline project, which is the version you're working with on your laptop, is consistent with your online project, which is the version running on the machine or the production line. In TIA Portal, Comparing your online and offline project is extremely simple and intuitive. Have a look at the following example. Here I am inside the TIA Portal project view. I downloaded my application and I went online. Can you see those green indicators behind every block? At the moment all of them are green and that tells us that all blocks are consistent. There are no differences between the online project and the offline project. Now we are going to make a small change in a function block. 
Let's go for example to FB Equipment Modules and make a change inside the FB Refill. We can delete for example this open valve variable right here in the static area of the block interface. And keep an eye on the green indicators while I delete this variable. We can see that two group indicators changed from a green color to an orange color with an exclamation mark and two blocks changed from a green color to a half orange, half blue color. These color changes indicate that these groups and blocks are not consistent anymore with the online project and a download is required to update these blocks in the controller. So let's download the application. And as we've covered before, TIA Portal will automatically compile all the blocks and it will only download the blocks related to the changes to the controller. Now we're done with our download and our indicators are all green again. We have no inconsistencies anymore between our online and offline project. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about the meaning behind the different colors of these indicators, it's all explained in detail in my TIA Portal PLC Programming Basics course. Just go and check out the description below the video. So TIA Portal gives us a very easy visual representation of online offline inconsistencies. But how does Somatic Manager fare here? Is there any kind of a fight at all? Not really. Somatic Manager does offer the option to manually check the online offline consistency by right clicking on blocks and selecting compare blocks. But again, it takes way more time to do this. It's not automated at all. And in the end, just much more of a struggle compared to what TIA Portal has to offer. When it comes to checking the differences between your offline and your online project, then TIA Portal delivers a user-friendly, intuitive and fully automated block comparison experience where Somatic Manager sadly remains stuck in the past. A vital aspect of troubleshooting any PLC application is the ability to monitor logic while being online with the PLC. You get eyes on the application so you can see what's actually happening in real time in your software. In this key area, we are specifically going to have a look at how logic is monitored inside a function block on both platforms, since monitoring of other blocks like OBs, DBs and FCs is very similar in Somatic Manager and TIA Portal. If your function block is only called one time in your user program, then there is no difference between these two platforms. Both TIA Portal and Somatic Manager will correctly display the monitored logic inside your function block. But what if you have a reusable function block that you call multiple times in your user program? Here on our sample application, we have for example the function block FB Refill, which is being called two times in the user program. Let's assume that there is a problem with refill process 1. For example, the process should have been started and we want to monitor inside the function block to find out what is going on. So we open the function block and we go online. There we go. The green colors in the ladder logic are now indicating that we are monitoring the logic. But how do we know which instance we are monitoring? We only have one FB refill, which is being called two times in our user program. So are we monitoring refill process one right now, or are we monitoring the refill process two instance? Well, in TIA Portal, you can easily choose the instance that you want to monitor by clicking on the Change Call Environment icon in the upper right corner of the monitoring window. A new window will pop up where you can choose which call environment, which instance you would like to monitor. In Somatic Manager, you do not have the option to select your call environment. If you would like to monitor a specific instance of a function block that's being called multiple times, then you need to disable first the calls for the other instances. Adding an always off tag in front of the call does the trick. Here again lies the real probability that you forget to enable those instances again after you're finished with troubleshooting, leading to an application that does not work anymore. The bottom line, when it comes to monitoring logic inside your function block, TIA Portal offers you the option to select which instance of that function block you would like to monitor. Somatic Manager simply does not have this option and once again makes it harder for the PLC programmer to perform a simple troubleshooting task. 
the idea of programming your PLC application, downloading your software to the PLC and pressing start afterwards on the machine to see everything run smoothly is, well, a myth. Let me know if you're the first one to pull this off. Over the years, I've programmed many applications in both Somatic Manager and in TIA Portal, and none of them were completely bug free to start with. There's always need for troubleshooting, so the available tools provided to you by the software platform are very important here. Both TIA Portal and Somatic Manager let you create a list of tags and variables in a watch table to monitor data in real time. Like for example here, the monitoring of the different states of a state handler. Furthermore, tags can be forced in a force table, like for example the forcing of a valve output. So these are two important troubleshooting monitoring tools that are available for both platforms. But there's a third tool, the one tool that TIA Portal has and Semantic Manager does not have. And personally, this is my go-to tool for troubleshooting. I am talking about traces. With traces, you can define a set of tags, a set of variables, and then record those over time. In TIA Portal, you can easily create a new trace by going to the trace folder and adding a new trace. In the configuration window, we can then add the tags that we would like to record. Like for example, the water level and the refill request of refill process one. Now we download the trace to the controller and we start recording. At the bottom axis, the X axis of the trace, you can see your timeline in seconds. And on the vertical axis, the Y axis of the trace, we have the range of both of our signals. You can see here that the analog water level is fluctuating up and down at the moment, and the digital refill request is going high and low. In my professional opinion, traces are an essential part of your toolset as a TIA PLC programmer. I even dedicated a whole lecture to it in my TIA Portal PLC Programming Basics course. So check out the description below this video for more information on that PLC course. When it comes to troubleshooting your Step 7 PLC application, TIA Portal is the clear winner here with the ability to configure and run traces. The single most important tool for troubleshooting your PLC application. If you are someone with field experience, then you know that there's a difference between the application that you initially develop offline on your computer and a tested application that eventually will run online on your customer's machine. Wouldn't it be great if we could somehow test our PLC application at home, sitting at the desk or at the office, without actually being connected to the customer's machine or production line? This brings us to the last key area where TIA Portal gives Somatic Manager a run for its money, simulating your PLC application. Both platforms give you the option to simulate your PLC application using Siemens' own proprietary Step 7 PLC SIM software. But where TIA Portal really shines is that Step 7 PLC SIM is completely integrated in the TIA Portal automation platform. To simulate any application in TIA Portal, just follow these three easy steps. First, start by selecting the device which you want to simulate like for example the PLC of our sample application. In a second step, you start the simulation by pressing the icon right here on the top bar. And in the third and final step, you download the application to the Step 7 PLC Sim Simulator, which is opened here on the left side. And that's it. After the download, you simply start the PLC, And you're running a simulation now where you can go online and test the complete functionality of the user program. TIA Portal wins this final round by featuring a totally integrated simulation software package, which lets you effortlessly simulate your whole PLC application with a click of a button. So there you go. That's it for this Step 7 comparison in six key areas between the newest kit on the block, TIA Portal, and its older sibling, Somatic Manager. I hope it's clear by now that TIA Portal has improved dramatically in every area over Somatic Manager. 
Once you get started with Step 7 programming in TIA Portal, you just don't want to go back anymore to the old ways of Somatic Manager. Over the last 10 years, Siemens has turned me from a real skeptic into a true believer. You know, my career started with Somatic Manager, and I used to love it. But now I've gotten so used to the major advancements in Step 7 programming in TIA Portal that I've had really no problem letting go of my old pal Somatic Manager. If you'd like to go and experience the awesomeness of TIA Portal by yourself, then go and check out the link in the description below this video for a free 21-day trial version of TIA Portal version 17. By the way, if you're professionally invested in becoming a structured PLC programmer in TIA Portal, then go and check out my step-by-step -step training courses at plcskilltree.com. Links to my courses are as well in the description below this video. I hope you enjoyed this Step 7 comparison video and remember to hit the like and subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this in the future. Take care.